Hello, everyone. It's great to be here. Uh, my name is Thomas Suarez. I'm 15 years old, and I live in Los Angeles. Oh, pardon me. No, no. I'm not speaking Spanish today, but uh, yeah, I speak, I speak in English. Um, I've always been fascinated by computers and technology. Ever since I was two years old, computers and or computers uh, have technology been my passion. I guess my passion for computers started back in the days of Windows 98, when beige boxes ruled the PC industry. I loved to tinker with these machines and figure out how they worked. Sometimes a part would break, but it was a learning process. So a few years later, when I was eight years old, I wanted to start learning programming. And I saw all the cool apps and games that could be made by programming software. Uh, and then Apple launched the iPhone, and uh, it revolutionized the entire smartphone industry. I was so excited to start making apps for this new platform. So over the next year, I taught myself Objective-C, which is Apple's programming language. Um, and I made my first app called Earth Fortune. So Earth Fortune was an interactive uh, horoscope teller with a color changing Earth. And while it was a simple app, it, um, it was my first entry into the App Store. Now, seeing my app on the, on the store was such a game changing moment because for the first time, uh, an independent software developer, even someone who didn't have that much experience, could make an app for the iPhone and uh, offer it. And after that, I wanted to make a game, a game called Bustin' Jeeber, which was uh, a Justin Bieber whack-a-mole game. Released, I released it in the days, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I released it in the days when Justin Bieber was still popular, and uh, it got many downloads. So. Uh, since then, I've expanded app development to both iPhone and Android platforms. And then during these app adventures, I started uh, a software company called Carrot Corp. Curiosity was always the driving force of these explorations. And a recurring question people have asked me over the years has been, how do you make apps? Right? How do you make apps? And of course, this is not a five-minute explanation. If you want to play baseball, you can join a baseball team. Or if you want to play guitar, you can get lessons for a guitar. But what if you want to program? Right? There, there wasn't anywhere to go to learn how to program or make an app. So in my sixth grade year at school, there were still barely any places to go. And I decided to do something about it. So I started a club in my middle school called the App Club, where students could come and learn about programming. Um, when I was 12, I had the chance to speak at a local TEDx event. And uh, it, it was perfect timing, because the App Club uh, had just launched at the middle school. Um, the TEDx event was really cool. I really enjoyed talking to the, uh, the local group of parents and educators. And I hope that everyone in the audience would understand the need for better technology education. My TEDx talk was uploaded to YouTube in November 2011. And I was so thrilled that my message was reaching so many people. I was amazed by the amount of email from kids all around the world who said they wanted to program too. And then there was an overwhelming desire for kids learning programming, and it's clear, it was clear that it wasn't being fulfilled. So when I learned programming, I had to self-teach from trial and error and getting concepts off the internet. I was frustrated, though, because there was nowhere for me or any of my peers to go to learn programming. And it was hard to find like-minded peers with the same passion. Self-teaching was the only way. So uh, there is so much to learn in the world of computer science and programming. And for that reason, everyone should be able to learn how to code. Here are some interesting statistics about where we are in teaching kids about programming. So this is a comparison of uh, uh, computer science education in the United States and China. In China, 100% of students learn computer science. And then we look at the United States, it's 5%. And that's a huge difference. That really needs to change. Here's another one. Uh, by 2020, there will be uh, more jobs available in computer science than, oh, OK, uh, more jobs available in computer science than students able to fulfill those jobs. So here's a quote that I think is very powerful. You get the slides? OK. Uh, everybody in this country should learn how to program a computer because it teaches you how to think. Steve Jobs said this, and he said it in an interview almost 20 years ago in 1995. Where are we now? There are actually less computer science graduates now than there were 20 years ago. 
Programming is not only a logical process, but a creative one too. I like to think of programming as a mix of logic, math, art, and design. Logic allows the computer to respond to different, uh, to respond correctly to different inputs and variables. Math lets us tell the computer the formulas for how to calculate outcomes. Art includes icons and the user interface of the app or software, and software design means that there are many different ways to do the same thing on a, on, in the software, uh, but some, may, some, sorry, some uh, ways may be more efficient than others. And as Andres said yesterday, critical thinking is extremely important in many fields, and it absolutely applies to programming. Programming is all about solving problems in a way that is logical and efficient. When your mind is set free to explore and create, great things happen. Programming will be an essential skill for the future, and kids of the future generations and this generation need to, need to be able to know how to do it. After realizing this, I set out to design an innovative nonprofit for young tech minds to uh, explore the vast field of computer science and programming. This is App City. And as I mentioned earlier, I started an app club in middle school. In order to fulfill all of the club's goals, I moved it into a not-for-profit organization called App City. An education specialist at Rand Corporation, um, which is a big think tank in the United States, also offered to help and was very supportive. He introduced me to a PhD student who uh, helped create intuitive curriculum for the class. Uh, a local entrepreneur helped to help, well, posted the App City as it at his offices, sorry, uh, and everything was coming together. App City's summer 2013 course went really well. We had kids who knew a little bit to kids who really didn't think they could code at all, but App City led them to success. We had a two week course, two and a half hours every day, but at the end of the course, all of the kids turned out with a fully functional app that they were proud of and they had fun making. The ideas were completely thought out by them and their teams, and they programmed, it without, uh, they programmed them without any graphical interfaces or templates. In order to offer programming to more students, this year I teamed up with Star Education, which is a nonprofit educational organization. We've worked together to retool the curriculum so it can be brought into more schools, and uh, Star is the perfect partner for App City um, because they are bringing in uh, lots of technology into education in a fun and intuitive way. We have merged the best of App City curriculum and the expertise of Star Education into one great programming course. And we are teaching real programming here, and that's very important. We teach the same tools, including Java, Eclipse, and Linux, that are all used in industry by Apple, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. We had our first session at Star Education last week, and um, I'm so excited to continue the App City legacy. I'm so proud of what we've done with App, with App City and the updated curriculum that was developed with Star. We really do believe that this idea can have a giant impact on this generation and generations to come. There have also been many nonprofit organizations. Oh, okay. No, I'm not done yet, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, there have also been many nonprofit organizations, uh, including uh, businesses and good corporate citizens, uh, who have helped uh, to step up or have stepped up to help meet the need and desire for kids learning programming. Nonprofits such as Girls Who Code and Stanford University's free online programming course are also fill, working to fill a tremendous void. However, I'm very passionate that programming is for both boys and girls. Programming shouldn't be isolated to just one gender. In addition, it should be brought into public schools. Programming will help us all succeed in this world. So schools should definitely support programming. And what some school districts don't realize is that you cannot code on an iPad. By bringing iPads into a school, sometimes the focus on desktop PCs is lost. So while the iPads are great for bringing in new technology, and they definitely have their place, um, leaving the desktop PCs in the dust creates huge problems for computer science education. And computer science is not just using computers, you know, typing, photo editing, or word processing. Computer science is working, studying with the technology behind the computers, how they function. That includes software design, hardware architectures, and programming. And you cannot program on an iPad. You may be able to use a game to program, but that doesn't excuse the fact that real code, which is used by Apple or Google or Microsoft or whoever, cannot be done on an iPad. You have to use a computer. And an iPad is not this type of computer since it runs a mobile operating system. 
So we still need to focus on the computers and the computer science education. In addition to programming education, uh, a new technology is also a very key area for innovation. Last year, I had the opportunity to uh, get Google Glass and start developing for it. And uh, it's a really cool device. It's been really cool to be a part of shaping the Glass ecosystem and uh, making apps for it. Google Glass is still a beta product, though, meaning it's being tested by its explorers. It's interesting to see reactions when you go outside wearing something that looks like this on your head. I've published multiple apps for Glass, which are shared with other Glass developers. Uh, my favorite app is a hand tracking experiment uh, where you can use Glass by just waving your hand in midair, use this a motion tracking camera. And then another area that's really interesting is uh, 3D printing. And this is really an up and coming uh, area for innovation. A 3D printer allows anyone to make real plastic objects, um, real 3D plastic objects. Uh, I have a hobby 3D printer at home called a MakerBot. This is what it looks like. A 3D printer works in a similar way to a hot glue gun. Uh, instead of heating up and extruding plastic, though, it heats up and extrudes plastic, moves it around, and layer by layer, it makes an object like, uh, like this. So you get something that looks like this out of a printer. So that's, that's uh, pretty I'm just gonna put this here. Um, that, you know, so that's pretty cool. And then uh, I've also been developing a new type of 3D printing technology that prints 10 times faster than current generation 3D printers. It'll be, it'll be publicly announced soon. Now, I'd like to mention something that's very important uh, in this world, and that's curiosity. We are curious by nature. Every question we have about our world is another step to our understanding. But our understanding of one topic creates many more questions, and we like it that way because we love to learn, we love to wonder, and we love to understand. So uh, people often ask me, how did you get interested in computers and technology? Did your parents push you into this? And the answer is no, my parents have never pushed me into technology. I was, uh, I was curious to learn more, and you know, I was always curious, curious to learn more. Uh, curiosity is why we have science, technology, engineering, and math. So it is important that we retain our curiosity and uh, keep innovating in this world. Thank you.